Everybody knows how Santa Claus looks. You've seen his pictures in your picture books. You've heard about his house with the North Pole near, and his sack, and his sleigh, and his eight reindeer. But did you ever before in your life know that Santa Claus had a wife? Well, he has. She's the reason he doesn't get thinner, for she serves his breakfast and cooks his dinner. She warms his slippers and dries his boots and mends the fur on his Santa Claus suits. And what is she like? By best report, she's a cozy, rosy, grandmotherly sort. Like with a dimple in her cheek, a twinkle in her eye, and a smell of vanilla and hot mince pie. But the nicest thing that I've heard about her is Santa couldn't get on without her. For it may be Santa Claus who makes toys for all the children in the world. It may be Santa Claus who drives the sleigh through the winter sky and climbs down waiting chimneys. But it's Mrs. Claus who gives him his good ideas. <coughs> Santa, she tells him, in mid-November, there's a brand new boy in the Smiths, remember. He ought to have something that's just his size. Say a nice blue rattle, the color of his eyes. And a Haverford Jones now, don't forget, he's pining for a grown-up chemistry set. His parents pre pretend that he can't be done, but I like Haverford. Bring him one. She knows when children in the state of Maine are ready for the first electric train. Or she'll say briskly, on earth I hear, dresses for ladies are short this year. So don't you think that the fashion calls for shorter dresses on little girls' dolls. And Santa hems, and Santa haws, but he usually listens to Mrs. Claus, except just once when they couldn't agree. And this is the story as it came to me. It was Christmas Eve at the end of the day. The rainy deer nickered as they clamped their hay. Elbows flying, the reindeer groom polished up the harness in the big storeroom. While Santa, weary from his wear and tear, longed by the fire in his easy chair. I think, he murmured with pardonable pride, everything is ready for my midnight ride. Everything's jolly as it always been. The sleigh stands waiting with gifts crammed in. Tricycles, bicycles, dump truck toys, and cowboy outfits for a million boys. Jump ropes, jack stones, dolls with curls, and sets of dishes for a million girls. Books for the bookish who sit and read, baseball mitts for the baseball breed, kites for the tomboy, or balls to pitch, practical presents for the not so rich, candy for the sweet tooth, chess for the clever, it's just as, it's, as it's been forever and ever. I do think Christmas will be fine this year. Don't you agree with that, my dear? Mrs. Claus was washing up the dinner dishes and stacking them in the china closet. She wiped her hands on her apron, turned around to Santa, and looked at him over her spectacles. And then she said firmly, no. Santa was so surprised he nearly fell out of his chair into the fire. No, she said, in the clearest of voices, I'm tired of our same old, tame old choices. Maybe you'll consider that my plans are strange, but just one Christmas, let's have a change. Change, said Santa, in a startled way. Said she, I thought of it just today. We don't want the helpers to overhear. So come a little closer. I'll whisper in your ear. Up on her toes stood Mrs. C and puss, 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 like a honeybee. Puss, 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 like a bee in clover. She whispered her secret over and over. But Santa Claus, Claus's look like got blacker and blacker. His breath became pop, like a red firecracker. 
His whiskers wiggled, his lips drew down. He put on his terrible Santa Claus frown. Then, stop, he thundered, not one word more. And he stamped from his chair to the bedroom door. Me? Change Christmas? Why, what a question. It gives me the sneezes and indigestion. A pain in my shoulder, a rash, a cough. I want to have a nap to sleep it off. It's hours till midnight by the clock on the shelf. Let nobody wake me. I'll wake myself. And he went indignantly into the room, muttering, I never heard of such nonsense. The door shut behind him, and Mrs. Claus heard the bed creak as he threw himself upon it. She finished sweeping up the kitchen and then sat calm, calmly down with her crochet. The clock ticked on and on and on. Soon it was 12 o'clock, and Santa hadn't stirred. At 10 past 12, the reindeer groom phoned Mrs. Claus from the big storeroom. Please tell Santa the reindeer wait while children dream in their beds. He's late. <clears throat> Already the stars are silver warning. Doesn't he know it's Christmas morning? Tap, she tapped at the bedroom door. Tap, 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 and one tap more. But poor tired Santa, worn to a splinter, <clears throat> slept like a bear holed up for the winter. Slept like a porcupine curled in a queue. What was uh, his wife to do? She put down her needle. She wound her thread. She gave one toss of her merry head. I need that. Then half to herself said, this may shake him. But didn't he tell me I shouldn't wake him? I have the addresses. I know the way and somebody has to drive that sleigh. On went a muffler about her throat. On went a big red fur trimmed coat. Though it seemed like a giant size too wide, she belted it around her, a pillow inside. On went the big boots, on went the cap. She packed up gloves and the Christmas mat and rubbished in a cupboard till she found therein a false set of whiskers to fasten on her chin, till you couldn't have told with a casual stare that it wasn't Santa Claus standing there. <coughs> and maybe the reindeer sensed the change, and maybe the groom may have thought it strange that never a word passed Santa's lips as he climbed in his sleigh and cracked the whip. But long before they could ask or pause, into the air flew Mrs. Claus. Dawn was uh, coloring the sky when Santa woke. He rubbed his eyes, looked at his watch, and leaped from bed as if he had been stung by a hive, a hive of hornets. I've missed the ride, he shouted, and he began to ring every bell in the place. Elves and groomers came running from all parts of the house, half dressed, half asleep, very frightened indeed. They could not understand what he was storming about. By the stars in the dipper, by the Milky Way, who let me sleep till Christmas Day? A thousand years and never a miss, but how can children forgive me for this? I'm ruined, I'm finished, and all because they'll give up depending on Santa Claus. But sir, cried the groom, it can't be so. I waved goodbye to you hours ago, with the deer in the sleigh and the gifts crammed pet, and there you are now, sir, coming back. His mouth fell open with a foolish grin, and the reindeer team came jingling in, and gay as a sparrow, though twice as stout, a little red figure climbed stiffly out. I must admit they were hard on me, all those chimneys, said Mrs. C. <clears throat> the Santa was taken by such surprise he could merely mumble and blink his eyes. Then he reared so, roared so loud that the roof got quivering. 
You mean to say that you made delivery? You drove my reindeer? You steered the sleigh? Then heaven help children on earth today. Now Santa, Mrs. Claus said quietly, wait until I get this big old coat off and I'll explain. And she pulled him down into his chair. After all, you told me most particularly that I wasn't to wake you up. Though now what you've asked me, I must confess, it's an odd sort of Christmas, more or less. I wasn't quite sure <clears throat> how you had things fixed up. Maybe I got the addresses mixed up. Yet anyhow, Santa, she said and smiled, I did leave a present for every child. Skis for the bookworms, book to read. On rainy days, on rainy Sundays, for the baseball breed. For girls who had nothing but dolls on hand. Nice red dump trucks for dumping sand. Nice soft pandas, huggable and fat, for little boys waiting for a cowboy hat. Useless present, extravagant and funny, for children with never a cent of money. Practical presents for those most rich, for studious fellows, balls to pitch, ribbons for tomboys, jacks for the brothers, electric trains for fathers and mothers, chess for the sweet tooth, candy for the clever. It's not what it's been forever and ever, but I did bring a rattle just his size for that boy at the Smiths with the new blue eyes. And I promise you one thing I didn't forget, Haverford Jones chemistry set. <coughs> Alas, most Santa, hands to his face, I'll never recover from this disgrace. Glance at the earth, you're sure to see children crying by the Christmas tree, children sobbing till they wet their sleeves for gifts expected they didn't receive. Listen, you hear them? And leagues around up from the world came a curious sound. A sound like the surge of waves on shore. First a ripple, and then a roar, till the North Pole trembled both fore and after. But it wasn't weeping, it was children laughing. Giggles and gales and peals of mirth from startled children around the earth. Gusts of merriment, cheers, applause, and a chorus of Thank you, Santa Claus, <coughs> for bringing last night through the dark and cold the wish of our hearts we had never told. Santa stared at Mrs. Claus for a long, long time without a word. Suddenly he began to laugh too. He laughed so hard that she had to tap him on the back for fear he would choke. He laughed so loud that he sent snow sliding down the window panes. When he could speak once more, he said stoutly, Merry Christmas. And Mrs. Claus says, Merry Christmas back. By the wild north wind, he chuckled then, I can take a joke with the best of men. We needed a change or I'm a dunce. All right, my dear, we have had it once. But after this, leaves, leave the ride to me. I'll be delighted, said Mrs. C. And they and the helper sat down to a breakfast of bacon and eggs and sausages and fried chicken and hot cakes with maple syrup and two kinds of rolls and marmalade and currant jelly and plum pudding. But Mrs. Claus was so tired out from chimney climbing that Santa had to get supper that night for himself. <laughs> <laughs>